Okay, this is like the fourth time trying to start this video. It's actually supposed to be about yeast, but I, I was wanting to, uh, I was going to say a little something about this uh, video song, song, <laughs> this video that I saw on YouTube last night. Uh, but I think I'm going to put that in, I think I'm going to put that in a separate video. But if you, uh, you want to go see this cute girl and her cute brothers, they're just all so cute together. They're just really, really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was sitting here last night and I was thinking, she, she's so cute, she could turn a gay man straight, but I know that's probably inappropriate, and I asked my husband if that was a saying, and he said he thought he heard it before, so she is just so cute, it makes me want to, makes me want to do something, go back 30 years and, you know, lighten my hair and permit her, <laughs> it's, it's of no use. She's really, really cute. So anyways, it's called Band Perry. It's a girl and her two younger brothers. Cute, cute, cute. And they have a studio version, which was called Ocean Way Studio. And the other one was, uh, was a, uh, what do you call that, music video. So let's talk about yeast. <laughs> let's get off of it. I just, I have gone for years without really enjoying too much of any kind of music and all of a sudden I just stumbled upon a bunch that's just really got me jazzed, <laughs> so to speak. So here we go. Just nice music. Just the cutest, cutest, cutest song. <laughs> You've probably all heard it all my life. Anyway, oh, I'm going to have a laughing fit here. Back to the yeast. <laughs> the re what is the reason that you need to have... Um, a perpetual starter for your yeast. Well, you don't need it. It's not ne necessary, but let me tell you why it might be desirable. And I am not a yeast expert. I did do a little bit of uh, looking around on the, the uh, on YouTube before. Sorry, got hair everywhere. Where'd it go? On YouTube. And there's a lot more intricate information out there than what I'm familiar with. The basic part of what I'm familiar with is you have uh, instant yeast, granulated yeast. You have non-instant granulated yeast. The instant is not supposed to need to be proofed ahead of time, which is where you put a little sugar and warm water in it and let it rise up separately and let it bubble and foam before you dump it in with the rest of the ingredients. So you've got instant yeast, non-instant yeast, both granulated. And then you have compressed yeast, which you buy in cubes. And uh, if you have a choice between the two, I would take the compressed yeast. I think it works. I don't know about the I don't know for, for sure about the commercial stuff you buy in the grocery store, um, how much slower it acts. Somebody could probably clue us into that than the, um, than the granulated yeast does, dry yeast. But um, definitely, I think the quality is higher. Now, I've had experience with some bakery quality yeast, which is the reason I'm making this video today. It looks like I got chocolate there, but it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I um, I have had some experience with uh, bakery quality yeast, and generally, from what I've seen, it comes in a case. It's like industrially, it's used industrial or in large industrially. I can't say that, or in large um, quantities. You know, the big old Hobart mixers that the bowl is as big around as your arms and. Um, they mix it up like that in the bakeries, but and it comes. I was going to bring it in here. It comes in a one-pound block, and there I think there's 20 or 24 or so in a case. So your only hope, unless you get a group together that can buy a case from an industrial supplier or a restaurant supply company or a bakery supply company, would be to um, let's see what's the thing. Your only hope, oh, is to get a is to get a bakery to sell you one or two. So you might want to check around at the smaller uh, privately owned bakeries and see if they will sell you some. They actually used to sell it years ago in my town at the grocery store bakery and they only wanted 65 cents for it back then. I'm sure it's way more than that now. It works slower but it's, it, I've done I've done side-by-side -side, um, comparisons with the two. And there's no comparison. It's awesome stuff. This is bakery quality compressed pasty. It's like a gray paste. And I'm not sure how it the uh, equivalency measures out because the stuff in the 
the compressed yeast that comes in little blocks in the grocery store is already pre-measured. It looks like it's been a long time since I've used it. I'm thinking that it might be like a tablespoon and I can't remember. If somebody knows what the equivalent is, please let us know. But when you're talking a one pound brick, like it's not a brick, it's a, it's a, not a one pound brick, it's a, like butter, <laughs> it's like butter <laughs> all in one lump. But anyway, you probably want to use, you know, a little square, maybe a tablespoon or so equivalent to maybe a tablespoon of yeast, but somebody help us out there because they're not real expert with it. So back to the topic at hand. The reason you might want to have a perpetual starter or at least have directions for a perpetual starter, which I sent out yesterday. I think I sent it accidentally as a six-part bulletin and it was given to us by Warrior. Let's see. I'm just going to be able to find it right here. I've got it handy. It was sent to us by 97 Warrior Grad, G-R-A-D. And I would like to read a little note that she put in here. Um, she's savvy. I'm sorry, the computer screen is slow on me here. Um, let me see if I can bring this up quick enough or if it's going to stick on me. She, um, she's got a lot of... Uh, Let's see, where is it at? Nope. I may have to do that separately. Let me see. Let me try one more time. Sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to work with two screens here. Let's see if this popped up. Okay, she says... She said... Uh, nope, this is not what I thought it was. She has lots of background. I've got the wrong... Let me see if I can try one more. Oh, I think I might have the right one here. Let's see. She said she has, um, okay, here it is. I have journals stocked with depression era recipes and me meal stretching advice, wartime kitchen conservation tips, and recipes that are not o that not only appease the appetite, but help ease the strain on a bare shelf larder. Information in her opinion, which is helpful now more than ever. I also collect wartime cookbooks and pamphlets. My favorites are the series Healthy, Health for Victory Club Meal Planning Guide by Westinghouse Corporation. Anyway, so she has um, she has some background. She said, uh, "I love to correct, I love to collect recipes, cooking, baking tips, and tricks from the Dust Bowl and Depression years, and especially from the World Wars." So this is an asset we might want to tap here. Let me get back where I can see you, but you can't see me there. This is an asset that we might want to tap, but what I now we're eight minutes into it. Sorry. Apology, apology. I like to keep them short. What I wanted to say was the reason that you might um, reason that you might want to have a perpetual starter is because of this. Okay. You can freeze instant yeast and non-instant granulated yeast in your freezer and it will keep a long time. I'm going to conservatively say, you know, six to 15 years in your freezer, conservatively, if it's kept, you know, at a decent, reasonable temperature. So that, if you kept enough of it in your freezer, you'd be home free. It's, it's vacuum packed in a brick, a real brick. It's, I mean, you know, it's hard, like coffee is vacuum packed. So it will stay um, at room temperature for quite a while if you had to take it out of the freezer. You can, although I haven't seen it done, you can dry pack it in number 10 cans. You can granulated instant or non-instant yeast. You can uh, package it in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. Having said that, having said that, what you might want to consider is keeping the directions uh, which I think I'm going to try to paste those in. Give me a little time. I'm going to try to paste those in below this video again for those of you that may not have gotten the bulletin. Um, it has potato water and it has yeast and so forth in it. Whether you use compressed yeast in there, which I would definitely recommend that if you can't get your hands on the bakery quality yeast or you use instant yeast, whatever you use, it's going to be good for you to print this out as a hard copy and keep it on hand because if you whether you have one pound of yeast in your freezer or you have 30 pounds of yeast in storage it still um, allows you 
to start up a batch. They used to do this years ago when couples would get married. Um, it allows you to start up a batch, like the Herman type thing. Have you seen the coffee cakes with the Herman directions on them? It allows you to start up a starter batch and then, I'm sorry, excuse me, from that you take um, some out every time you bake and you replenish it. So what ends up happening is you have this you have this um, have this base of yeast and flour and potato water and what have you in the, in the mixture and you mix it up and it begins to grow and grow and grow and then you take some of that out and you put it in your bread and you mix it up and you bake your bread and then you keep you replenish your main batch like it says in the directions and so that gives you the opportunity to not only have an endless supply of yeast that would go on for years or share it with your next door neighbors and it doesn't it isn't going to cost you anything if you can share it with people all up and down your street in an emergency let's say they have flour <laughs> to bake bread with but you could um, you could share it and you'd have enough you know you could just keep replenishing it and growing it and everybody has yeast and everybody's happy and everybody has bread and from what um, from what our friend 97 warrior grad says to us it makes some really incredible product now Having said all that, <laughs> I'm being really redundant here. Because this bakery quality yeast is not something that you can get your hands on easily, and because it is superior, in my opinion, to anything I've ever used before, if you can get your hands on some, you get a bakery to sell you some, or find a supplier for it, or find 12 friends to buy two pounds each, or whatever, from a commercial supplier, then and I'm not sure how well it freezes. I can't answer that question for this pasty yeast. Um, so then you have 12 minutes. <laughs> oh dear. So then you have um, a, a continual supply of something that would, it's hard to get anyway. You know, you can't get your hands on it very well anyway. I, I at this point in my life, I'm not going to be mixing up a a batch of this and using it over and over again at this point I would like to do that I would really like to do that especially with the bakery quality yeast I don't know if you can call it compressed I don't know what you call it it comes in a little block <laughs> like I said it comes in a block one pound block and it's a little um, it's a little drier than the consistency of butter and it's kind of a grayish color 12 minutes and 45 seconds that's way too long so um, please 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 print out all the instructions for either this one or Google one. Find one that somebody's Aunt Susie has. I don't care where you get it from, but please, as part of your preparedness supplies, have directions for perpetual yeast mixture. This is a sweet dough versus a sour dough, which is like, I don't know if I can even explain the difference. It's not a sour dough bread. This is a sweet dough. So now we're 13 plus minutes. I'm quitting. God bless your efforts to prepare. Make a list and check it twice so you can eat more than just beans and just rice. And just because I would do some of these things does not mean you should do them. So just because I would doesn't mean you should. Thanks. Bye.